All right, welcome. Uh, in this video, we will uh, use uh, the analog to digital converter ADC in a STM32 F7 uh, nuclear board. Uh, basically, what we'll do is we'll feed in a sine wave of one kilohertz. Uh, we'll capture about 10,000 data points using polling method. So we'll we'll first start out with polling. So all we'll do is grab the data, store it in an array, and using a debugger, we'll look at that array. Okay, that's the goal for today. All right, so let's get started. Let's create a new project. STM30QMX under board selector. I go to STM microelectronics. Type of the board is Nuclear 144. My microprocessor series is the F7, and it's the first F746 board that I'm using today. So I'll double click on that. It'll launch the uh, QMX for that board. So let's get let's wait for it all right awesome uh, here I am going to clear all the pinouts first I'm gonna say yes now I have a clean slate uh, what I want to do is first on go to sys make sure I enable serial wire so that I can start debugging so those are my serial wire the only thing I really need for this particular exercise is the connection to ADC 1 uh, on the nuclear board, I will connect my sine wave coming in to the analog port A0. It's on CN9 connector of the nuclear board. Uh, that happens to be, if I look at the nuclear manual, it happens to be the IN3 uh, of the analog uh, to digital converter. So I've selected that. I will say, uh, I will minimize this, let's say. So ADC selected, I did the sys, and that's pretty much all the settings I have to do. Now let me go to project. Uh, change the settings. On the settings, I want this to be uh, called ADC uh, poll array. All right, so I'm I'm going to pull an array. I'm going to generate this for the MDK ARM version 5. That's a Kyle Microvision 5 that we have. Uh, on the code generator, I'll say copy only the necessary files, and I will ask it to generate peripheral initialization as a separate header file so that the main file is not cluttered uh, with everything in it. So I'll just say OK to that. Uh, let me go to clock configuration, set that to 216. That's our maximum on the nuclear board. Uh, it'll say that uh, the external crystal is not available, so it's going to change it to the PLL. It just did that. And these are the same configurations we've been using so far. Under ADC1, now I can see the analog. I double click on it. Well, let me just for fun, change this to 10 bits. That's the resolution I'm changing. Uh, there's no reason why I did this. I just wanted to show you that you could. Uh, we will not play with uh, interrupts or any other settings for now. So let's just leave it at that. Just say apply, say OK. And I'm done making all configurations so I can generate my source code. So I'm going to generate my source code. It'll take about a few uh, 10 to 20 seconds, hopefully not too long. So it's copying all the library files, and there it is. It's done. Let me open up the project. And my Kyle Microvision project is about to open up right now, and here it is, all opened up. So under this, I'm going to go to the main application user uh, main.c. Okay. Here's the goal for today. So the goal for today is basically to collect 10,000 samples. So I ha I'll have a waveform of this sort. So I I have this particular hookup to my nuclear board connected to a Disneyland Electronic Explorer board, which I'm using as a function generator. So uh, whatever uh, function generator you have, I'm going to generate a one kilohertz sine wave uh, like this. I'm going to run. I'm going to capture that data. Okay. And this is what I want to do. I'm going to update my Kyle Microvision code, main code. Uh, so that I grab 10,000 ADC sample values. Okay, uh, I'm going to build it, and I'm using the debugger. I'm going to watch this particular variable that I am going to create uh, and save as an array. So that's a goal uh, for now. Okay. All right. So let's on the main. Let me go to the user code begin private variables, and there I will declare a uint32 uh, variable ADC underscore data uh, 10,000 points. And at the same time, we'll probably go iterate over a loop. So I'm just going to declare i for a loop iteration variable and uh, keep it at that. The next thing I'm going to do uh, 
is I am going to go to the main and I see HAL, is, HAL has been initialized, GPIOs have been initialized, ADC1 has been initialized. So basically my code here uh, is going to be in the while loop. Okay, I'm going to do HAL underscore ADC underscore start and I'm going to start the handler. HADC1 is the name of the handler. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, all right, so uh, before I actually go ahead and do the conversion, let me quickly show you on Kyle Microvision. Under functions, uh, if this function array right here, uh, I can't remember all the ADC functions, and I know those exist in the HAL ADC.C. So let's click quickly click on this and find out all the functions that are available there. So I had I just did the HAL underscore ADC underscore start. That's a way to start the polling method uh, for ADC. If I click on this, in fact, uh, right at the very top of the HAL ADC file, so right at the very top of the ADC file as I read about what this file has, and that's always a good way to get started, I see right here. HAL ADC driver can be used among three modes, polling, interruption, and transfer by DMA. It says start the ADC using HAL ADC start. We just did that. Wait for the end of conversion using HAL ADC underscore poll for conversion. So that's a function we're going to look for. Uh, and then finally, it says to read the ADC converted values, use the HAL ADC get value. Stop the ADC peripheral using HAL ADC stop. So we need four functions, start poll for conversion, get value, and then stop. So let's see what poll for conversion does. So poll per conversion, if you look at this, poll for conversion basically waits for the end of uh, conversion flag to be set when an ADC uh, is being asked uh, to get a, grab a value. It takes the ADC handler and you assign it a, a timer, about 10 or 15 milliseconds or whatever you want, to, to basically skip out or the timeout value uh, if the conversion is not completed. Okay, so we'll use the HAL ADC poll for conversion. So let me go back to main. So HAL ADC poll for conversion, it's ADC1, I'll give it a 10 millisecond timeout uh, value. So great. So I've done that now. So I've started in the while loop, I've started the uh, uh, ADC. I've asked it to do a HAL uh, ADC poll for conversion. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to store what I converted in an array called ADC I and do HAL ADC underscore get value. So get value. And the HAL ADC get value basically takes in the parameter just the handler. So it's ADC one. So I'm asking you to get the value. And since I'm in the while loop now, so I initialized i equals 0. i equals 0 for the loop. So right here in the while loop, I have written the first one. Let me update i, i++. Plus plus. And we don't want more than 10,000 values. So if i is greater than uh, or equal to 10,000, let's just break out of this while loop. Uh, break and what we'll do is right after after we break out uh, we will basically say hell underscore ADC underscore stop the ADC one handler okay so we've finished writing our code so we started poll for conversion we got the value uh, we got 10,000 values store that in this ADC underscore data array uh, and now we've stopped it. So let's save this, let's build it. Uh, it might take a second or it might take a long time depending on whether it's the first time we're building it uh, because it might have to compile all the libraries uh, before that. So we're done. So it says two errors. So let's go figure out what the errors are. Uh, and somewhere out here I have some I was searching for ADC handle type definition earlier. Uh, I think I happened to write in there uh, by accident in the wrong file. So let me rebuild that. Okay, no errors, no warnings. Okay, we built it. Uh, so next thing I'm gonna set up my uh, waveforms. So this is a waveform I'm gonna apply. I have a three volt from zero to uh, three volt uh, sine wave 
with one kilohertz frequency. Uh, I'm going to hit run on this side. And now my function generator is actually running. Uh, so I'll move that out of the way. And now what I want to do is I want to download the code right here. So I'm downloading it onto my nuclear board right now. Now what I want to do is I want to just go to ADC data, uh, right click and say add ADC data to watch window. Okay, so if I look at this, now ADC data is not a single value, so it has uh, it has all these values. These are hexadecimal, so let me convert that uh, from hex to regular decimal. So right now it's all zeros. I'm going to hit run on the debugger, and you should see this value change. So it changed, and now it just stopped, okay, because it collected 10,000 data points. This is capable of only showing about 2,000-ish. So we won't be able to see all the values here. So it looks like it stopped at some point. Uh, so let's go. Uh, how do we know if this works? I mean, can you see a sine wave in these values? Maybe not. So let's figure out how to import these values. So let me stop the debugger. Uh, all right, so I've stopped the debugger. Uh, and I will show you how to export this value from ADC underscore data uh, to an Excel file or MATLAB, whatever your uh, viewing preference is. All right, so exporting this value, stop the debugger, go to debug, function editor, uh, say cancel for now. Uh, we'll say, all right, so here we'll start typing. So we'll create a new function and call it save vals. And this is the format of the debugger uh, function. So here's save vals. Inside save vals, we're going to iterate over the loop and basically ask the debugger to dump or log the values into a file we'll call, let's say, myadcvals.log. Uh, so it'll save all that value in that particular file. Uh, so let's iterate over the loop. n equals 0, n less than 10,000, n plus plus. And what we want to do there is basically print the value uh, slash n. And we basically just want to print for now, uh, let's see, uh, just the ADC underscore data that was the name of the array. And we just want the nth item of that array. Uh, we are done here with the print. So we're done with a for loop. So we'll just ask it to execute uh, turning off the logging for now. Okay. So this is the function that we have created. We got to save or compile first. So it's compiled. You can save this as well. So we can save as, and we can call it, let's call it log vals.ini so that we can use it next time. We'll save that for now. We've compiled it already. Uh, no errors, it said. So now if I type it on the debugger right here, if I type save vals like this, what I'll see is the value of the ADC array is being dumped here. And simultaneously, if I open up the folder where I'm at, so here's a folder I am at, right now so exercises adc uh, pole array that's what i was doing under the mdk dash arm that's where the ini file got saved and that's also where the my adc vals dot log got saved if i open up the log file here it is uh, the log well let's copy all of that and put it in excel and see what we get so here's excel uh, let me just copy right here let me highlight that column and say insert uh, a chart, let's see, let's do this chart. And we clearly see that we've captured the sine wave. Right? We see that we've actually captured the sine wave. So in this exercise, we looked at how to grab values from the ADC using the polling method. Uh, we used polling method to grab, start the ADC, uh, poll, and grab the value, save it into an array of a predefined value. And then we use the debugger uh, to basically get those values out of the debugger into an Excel or MATLAB just to make sure that what we were doing is, cor uh, is correct. There are other ways of doing ADC. The next we'll explore is an interrupt-based ADC.